there's youth unemployment then rising when overall unemployment is falling. We can talk to James Shug, the senior economist for Westpac Institutional Bank, the oldest foreign bank in the UK. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. What do you read into these figures? Well, the point on youth unemployment is an important one, and it's a tragic one too. Uh, in the UK, as in most countries across Europe, uh, we are seeing rising youth unemployment. Um, the problem is, is, in tough economic times, it's easier uh, not to hire someone uh, than it is to fire someone. And uh, the, the, the ones that tend to suffer the most are the young. They can't get their first job, they can't get, they get experience, and uh, it becomes even more problematic for them. Um, the UK is getting off relatively lightly, I've got to say. It's still a big problem here, uh, but compared to countries like Spain and, and Greece, where as many as 60% of people under the age of 25 just can't get a job. Yeah, and what does history show then about these groups of um, people in a particular age group who are left behind at a certain period in an economy go going forward? Do, do they end up becoming some sort of a lost generation, as, as people have described? I think it depends on how long it takes the uh, recovery to build. And you've got to remember that this uh, financial crisis and recession that we're, we're emerging from over the last few years, um, it doesn't happen very often. This was, it wasn't a typical recession. This is not a typical recovery. So I'm not sure that the, the uh, history or economic history books are going to you know, give, have, give you an accurate answer to that question. What we hope is that there's enough economic growth out there so that uh, even the youths can benefit more than they are up to uh, now in terms of quite control. And when you look at the figures of people in work, one of the big sectors of growth is the part-time workforce. Uh, again, I suppose it's difficult to predict how, how that affects... Can you hear me? I think you're having trouble hearing me. Hi, hi, I'm James. Back. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm back. Oh, good, good. Um, yeah, I was talking about one of the other trends, looking at the figures, uh, the, the part-time unemployed, and the fact that that's an, a, a, an area that's expanding. Is it possible to make any predictions on that? The the part-time employed. Yeah. Look, mm. look. There's uh, um, remember, there's a whole right. There's two different surveys. There's the, the benefit claimants survey, which measures people who get get, get the dole. Um, but there's uh, also the household survey, which measures people who are looking for work but might not necessarily be uh, receiving any, any benefit. Um, on the former measure, it improved today. On the latter measure, it actually we actually saw higher unemployment, despite solid jobs growth right through uh, 2012, a year where there was no growth overall. So lots of conundrums uh, in the, the report, something in there for everyone, some good news, some not so good news. Um, but uh, one of the draw takeaways from it is that it seems that um, UK employers has hired as much as many as 600,000 extra workers last year to produce nothing more. Um, that's not good for productivity, not good for labour costs, and could even pose a risk to inflation. It's uh, good to talk to you, James Shug. Thank you very much for persisting with the sound problems as well. Thanks. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Time for a look at the